Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and I wanted to share with you 10 amazing iPhone features to enhance your iPhone experience. Hopefully you're not familiar with every single one of these and it will just improve your iPhone experience even more. The first thing has to do with wallpaper. Sometimes when you go to set a wallpaper and it doesn't fit properly, it will do things such as automatically extend and not look how you wanted it to look overall. Sometimes you won't get the entire wallpaper and there's an easy solution for this that's built into the iPhone. If we go back to our home screen, go to photos within a photo, you'll see here's a wallpaper that's meant specifically for an iPad. And while this would look great on an iPad, it won't fit directly on an iPhone. If we want to change this and make this photo fit properly, go to edit in the upper right, then tap crop in the bottom. We can tap crop again, or just tap the little boxes in the upper right. That's just sort of a fast way to get into that. Then slide over to wallpaper and just tap wallpaper. You can orient it based on which way you want to use it. So depending on how your phone is rotated, you can set it that way, move it around to where it fits properly, and then go ahead and tap done. So if we go to done, then we go and share it or go to our share sheet and then use as a wallpaper, you'll see that it fits properly. It's not automatically extending the image and we could do that if we want or crop into it, but it won't do it on its own. It will fit properly on the iPhone that you're using and it solves that issue. So sometimes you can't have the entire wallpaper because it's just not formatted properly. That should fix that for you. The next feature has to do with notes. Notes contains a lot of different features many people don't realize is there. Maybe you need to scan a document that you have to sign for someone and you don't have a fax machine or they want an email of something signed or just something that has your signature on it or you need to fill out altogether. You can do this directly in the notes app by scanning a document, photos, and more. If we go into the notes app, tap on the camera and then go to scan documents, it will bring up the camera and allow us to scan a document automatically. We'll bring in our Apple Watch Ultra pamphlet. You'll see it recognizes it by itself and takes a photo immediately. Maybe we have a document here for a standard application. This is just a, a sample document. You'll see there, it recognizes the document, takes the photo, and then adds it to our note automatically. Once we're done, tap save, and we can see those in just a moment. Give it a second to process, and now we have our documents. So once we're done, we can tap this button here and see more options for each individual photo. We can change it, rotate it, add a filter, or insert a blank page. We'll go back here. And once we're happy with that, all we need to do is send it, or we can mark it up with this little tool here. If we need to write on it, maybe go to a pencil and sign something or write on it. Once we're done, we can then share it. Tap the little share sheet icon, make sure it says send copy, and then scroll down to save files. So you can save this to a file, copy it, print it, or whatever you'd like. So if you'd like to save it, you'll have that option and you'll have more options in the upper right. This is just for sorting to find it. So if you want to add a tag to your file, you can do that also. So this is a great way to just save a file that you need to mark up and then send to someone else. So you could email that, save it to your files or anything you'd like to do with it. One feature I think gets overlooked a lot in iOS is Spotlight Search. Apple continues to add more and more to this. So if we pull down from the middle of our screen or just tap the search icon at the bottom, if you don't have that disabled, you'll get your search options. Here you could search for just about anything, whether it's a movie such as Back to the Future, it will give you more information about that. You can go directly to a web page about it, show more results, and see all the different options for it. However, you can convert things in here as well. And this is something I use all the time since where I live, we use Fahrenheit. Other places use Celsius for temperature measurement or kilometers and miles per hour or just even currencies. So maybe I want to know what 120 kilometers per hour is in miles per hour. Just start typing and it will show me right away that it's 74.56 miles or miles per hour. Maybe I want to know what a temperature is, maybe in Celsius, but I'm in Fahrenheit. So I'll type 76 F for Fahrenheit. And now it tells me it's 24.44 degrees Celsius, or maybe 76 USD and it will allow me to convert that to euros or something else right away in real time with real time results. So this is something I find incredibly helpful, whether it's distance, miles per hour, 
currency or anything else. They add more and more to it. So I would highly encourage you to try this out and see what you're searching for and see if it shows up here as well. One feature I find to be very helpful when you're recording with your camera is if you go in and maybe you're in a video and you bring in a display or something else, you'll notice that the white color behind here actually changes. That's called white balance. And based on what the overall environment is like, the iPhone is trying to figure out what actual white looks like. So as we bring this in, you'll see it change. Now, what I typically do is lock this so that it doesn't change throughout videos. Now that's something you do on professional cameras and you can do that on the iPhone now as well. If we go into settings and we scroll down to the camera option, then we go to record video, scroll down toward the bottom. You'll see that we have lock white balance. Once you start recording, it locks that white balance so it doesn't change. So what I'll typically do is bring in maybe a display. That's what I want it to look like tap record. Now it's locked. If I bring the display out, it may dim it because it's controlling exposure, but the white balance itself is not changing. So that's something I find very helpful and it makes things look more accurate and less distracting as less things are changing in the background. There's some features in photos. Many people aren't utilizing. And one of those has to do with editing your photo. If we go into this photo, the wallpaper again, linked in the description, we'll go to edit. And then within the edit, maybe we want to change a few different things here, whether it's the highlights, we'll just change it here a little bit. Maybe we'll saturate it a little bit, we'll make it much more saturated. It changed it dramatically. We could change the vibrance or whatever you would like. You can change this. And then once you're done with it, you can now copy and paste this exact same change to something else. If we go to the three dots in the upper right, tap on copy edits. And under copy edits, maybe we'll go to the next thing here. We'll go back and we'll copy those edits to the wallpaper I showed you earlier. So again, we go here and then paste edits and now it changes it. There it goes. It brightens it up and changes it overall. You can do that with anything and just paste the edits over and over. So here's another one. We'll change it. It pasted the edit and now it looks exactly like I had before. So it's a very helpful feature, but many people don't use if they want to edit many things at once. Also in photos, if you have a pet, whether it's a dog, cat, bird, or maybe it recognizes a flower or a person, you can name this tag it and then make it easier to search for those specific things. So if we wanted to see all of the different photos of this particular golden retriever tap on the eye here as it recognizes something we can see that it recognizes it's a golden retriever. And then if we tap this little icon in the bottom left of the photo, we can name this pet. We can see all photos with this pet in it, make a key photo or feature this pet less. So we'll tap name this pet. We'll just call this golden retriever, Jack tap done. This was sent in by Cameron and Connor. So thanks for sending this over and we'll tap done here. So you'll see it recognizes it. It's now named Jack. And then if we tap that icon again, we can change some different information about it. Now that Jack has a name, we'll tap the icon and we can see all photos of Jack. So you can use that right in search to find who you're looking for, a pet, a plant. You can even search things such as cars and it will bring up cars. So that's something that works great and helps you organize your photos a little bit better. You can also find different information similar to this within Safari. So just searching for a golden retriever. If we go to this photo, press and hold, we have the option to save to photos, copy or look up the subject. If we tap look up, it will recognize it. You'll see here and it gives us more information about a golden retriever. Just press and hold on the photo you're looking at and you can get more information if the phone will recognize it. So again, we'll try something else. And in this case, it's a tree. We'll go in and press and hold on the tree look up what it is, give it a moment to recognize it. And it says it's an Eastern white pine tree or just a pine tree in general. So again, it gives you more information about it. Just pressing and holding it recognizes it's a plant and lets you know exactly what it is. So you can do that with anything online. As long as it's a photo, press and hold, look it up and you'll see more information about it. So it's a great feature that I think is really underutilized when you're trying to figure out what something is. Now audio has a great feature that has to do with AirPods. So let me get my AirPods. I have my AirPods. I'll go ahead and connect them to my iPhone and give it just a second here. We'll make sure that it's on the iPhone directly. There we are. It's connected. And now what we want to do is first go into our settings within settings, go down to where it says control center and make sure that you have the listen icon or hearing icon there. If it's not there, scroll down, you'll see it below add it so that you can easily access it in your control center. Once you have that, go into your control center, 
find the little ear icon, and then press and hold on it. You'll see we have an option for live listen. If I tap on live listen, now I can hear myself directly through the microphone. So if I want to set this over maybe by a speaker so I can hear somebody and then listen directly with my AirPods, I can do that from a distance. So that's something that allows you to hear something from a distance or maybe just a little bit better with more volume. You could use it for the same thing with conversation boost. So now I can hear myself even clearer or louder than I was originally. So these are both great features, live listen and conversation boost that if you weren't familiar with them, make it a little bit easier to hear if you wanted to set your phone down and hear someone at a distance. Now, maybe you're listening to a song and and of course, we know that we have lyrics here, and that's something that Apple added a little while ago. We have different lyrics, and maybe we want to share those lyrics and have someone hear a specific part of a song that maybe we enjoy or something that you've recently been thinking about. So if we press and hold, we can then copy that part of the lyrics, select more or less, and then just share it with messages, share song to someone else. And then it will allow you to bring up the share sheet and share it directly either with airdrop. You can email it, add it to a note messages or whatever you'd like. So that's a great way to share some lyrics with someone, let them see exactly what you've been listening to, or maybe just share it for yourself within notes or a document you're working on. Now, if you take a lot of phone calls and maybe you're busy all the time and you want the phone to answer by itself so that you can actually continue working, but still answer that phone call since you can't touch your phone, you can enable this by going into your settings. So within your settings, go down to accessibility within accessibility, go to where it says touch and under touch, go to call audio routing. So scroll down to where it says call audio routing. It'll say automatic, at least that's what I have on mine. You can automatically route it to a Bluetooth headset, a speaker, and then have it auto answer a call. So maybe you want it to auto answer a call, turn that on, and then you can give it a time frame into when it will answer that call. So maybe after three seconds, or you can change it to a longer duration if you'd like, just let it ring for 15 seconds and then it will pick up on its own. So if you want to use that, that's actually an option that's fairly helpful if you take a lot of phone calls and need it just to pick up anytime someone calls. Of course, if you're getting a lot of spam calls, this could be annoying because it will automatically pick up the phone call. But otherwise, I think this is a great feature if you need to use it and you're taking a lot of phone calls and you're busy in the kitchen, working on a car, doing something else. There's a feature that was recently added to the health app to help with medications and it has additional features that I don't think people realize is there. If we go into the health app and maybe you take a lot of medications, we'll go into browse medication. And I just added a few different random ones here. If I scroll down, you'll see that it says drug interactions, none found. If maybe we add a medication such as we'll add warfarin. And again, this is just something I looked up randomly to see if it would interact. We'll just pick something random, tap next, skip and the tap done. And then you'll see it says drug interactions. Now there's one serious and one moderate. If we go to drug interactions, it will explain some of them and then basically warn you that there could be some interactions with different things here, such as Flonase and Warfarin. And then it gives you more information. Of course, you should always consult with a doctor on this or your physician that you have. But again, it will warn you of this and make you aware that maybe some of these things could interact. So that's something I think is very helpful if you take medications or maybe just wonder if something interacts add it here, see what you're actually taking and see if it interacts with it and then consult your physician. Those are 10 plus iPhone features to enhance your iPhone experience. And hopefully some of those were new to you and can make your experience even better. Let me know if you were familiar with all of them, or if you have any other tips that you think are kind of less known, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Of course, like I said before, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.